Hi, this is your host, Supreme Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of State of Energy. And today we have two guests, Prince Singh, architect at Alienda, and Benoit Johnson, R&D project manager at RTE. Prince, Benoit, it's great to have you both on the show. Thank you. Very happy to be with you, Swatna. It's my pleasure to have you folks again. And today we are going to talk about Linux Foundation Energy Functional Architecture. Before we kind of deep dive into that, talk a bit about what is this model? What is this project all about? The idea of, of uh, having an architecture is to have a clear picture of the ecosystem of the Linux Foundation Energy. And that's why at the very beginning of the story of the Linux Foundation Energy, we designed a functional architecture and we had the ability already to communicate about it, uh, especially in the, the Linux Foundation Energy Summit that was held in Paris in 2019, if I remember well. And, um, and then we had a group that was called the Full Architecture Working Group. And in this group, we had the contributors that proposed to, to make an experimentation on having a design of the architecture based on Archimate language. Uh, this proposal was done initially by EPRI, and we decided to organize a working group. Uh, first, it was uh, for proof of concept, and we were very happy with the result that we had, and we decided a few months ago to have a formal uh, special interest group to design, uh, to, to, uh, to have an up-to-date architecture of the Linux Foundation Energy uh, that is focusing mainly on the functional part with Archimate, but that can also be helpful for technical inter interfaces. In addition to what uh, Benoit said, just uh, adding on into that, um, not only the specifics are required, uh, but also uh, we wanted to make it clear what we what our scope is. So with the functional architecture, it becomes uh, very easy to approach a wider set of stakeholders and also maintain consistency and what we are doing inside the group. So that was, that was, that is uh, our main uh, motive with the, with the functional architecture. Can you also talk about the, the role of this architecture within the whole NF, you know, when we look at NF energy, you have so many projects. So I want to understand the role uh, that it's going to play within the project. This is a, this is a nice question. Thank you uh, for this question because it's, uh, it makes also a good bridge of what we just discussed, what Benoit just explained. So it gives, uh, the functional architecture gives a good overview of what the functions or the business functions or the value or the capabilities, what, uh, what the stakeholders in the, uh, uh, in the Linux Energy Foundation can deliver to the stakeholders. So that's one. And two is that we deliver this value through our projects. So at some point of time, we also need to see what is the synergy between these projects, uh, projects sorry, and how do the functions which these projects deliver, how do they come across, how do they merge, how do they create the synergy. So uh, this is one of the things which uh, is the underlying interest and also the uh, proper motivation for the uh, functional architecture. Yes, uh, you're right, Prince. So that's that's the main goal. It's to have a clear view, a clarification of where the projects are, what are they doing, and being able to, to show that to the world. And that's also interesting to have, um, also to, to identify where the empty space are, where we don't have projects that are covering what we expect as functionalities for the Linux Foundation Energy. And thanks to the work you've done, Prince, uh, you translated the initial functional architecture into the Archimate model. And uh, we can see that there are parts, there are area of functionality that we expect to have. I think, especially for example, for the uh, asset management, uh, we would like to have projects in asset management that we don't have today and that are identified already in our architecture. Can we draw parallels to other similar projects that may be part of Linux Foundation's other projects which are trying to achieve the same, or you think that this was kind of unique to this energy sector that you came up with this architecture model for the project? The methodology and the language that is used, Archimate, is very common in the IT uh, domain. So that's, uh, that's more reusing a methodology that is already uh, widely used in other uh, area. I don't know exactly in other Linux Foundation foundations they are using this this methodology, 
but that's uh, pretty common in our industry to use that. We, we talk about the, the idea behind the project. We talk about the scope about the project. Now, tech, let's talk about the practice part, which is like the working group. What are the, what are the parties involved and how actually you are driving this project? So that's now an official group of the Linux Foundation Energy. So you can uh, see uh, its activities uh, on the wiki of uh, the Linux Foundation Energy and you have a mailing list for that. Uh, so we have a steering, a technical steering committee, a TSC, like any other project. Uh, so that, this is actually identified as a special interest group. And uh, we have an annual review we report to, to the Technical Advisory Council of the Linux Foundation Energy. And uh, we soon uh, made the decision at the Technical Advisory Council level to make uh, mandatory the fact that any project that wants to become an uh, incubation state or over uh, needs to provide uh, its architecture to, to the group and to be integrated into the Linux Foundation Energy architecture. And the working group is, would be very happy to support any initiative because we know that everybody is not maybe able to do that. You need to be you have little skills to be able to, to do that. And the, the, the um, Archimate Working Group would be very happy to support any any project that wants to to help in in that. But now that's mandatory when you are um, um, incubation incubation stage or above, you need to provide your your architecture and provide it. Uh, in your annual review. It's in the interest of the project groups also. I mean, thinking from both perspectives, I think it's also in interest of the project groups or the stakeholders involved in the projects to be a part of our community and our, of our meetings of our uh, progress, because that way they can also see what are the synergies and what are what they can learn from the other, other project group and how does their project sit in the whole ecosystem of the energy transition. So that also uh, is benefiting for the project groups. When you look at the energy sector uh, globally, how is this architect going to kind of help you know a lot of other parties to get a clearer picture of what LF Energy is doing, how they can get involved, what are the projects they can share? So I want to understand the larger scope. The physical law are are, are global and 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 wire. The universe is based on the same physical rules. And uh, the, the challenges that we are facing in terms of energy is global, and we have uh, we have we need to elaborate the same kind of solutions. And sharing the way we are elaborating this uh, is probably the most efficient way of doing it. And the Linux Foundation Energy is tailored to do that. And this very group, Archimate Group, Architecture Group, makes it easier for anybody on the world on the planet to be able to identify what is already existing and how it can be integrated in, in their systems. Uh, the way we collaborate, the solution with that we are designing, they are not proper just for Europe, they can be implemented anywhere in the world. And the more we have, uh, the, the, the more the, the, the ecosystem is complete, the more we have, uh, we paved the, the, the functional architecture with open source projects, the easier it will be to, to spread the world with the open source solution that I'm able to be end-to-end -end solution uh, for um, uh, end to end solution uh, to the problem that, that, that is raised by the energy transition. I think uh, Benoit also touched upon a very important point uh, when he mentioned about the choice of Archimate because uh, by choosing Archimate for the functional architecture, we have made uh, it more uh, upper approachable for all the stakeholders, I think, because it's a it's a modeling language. It is known to most uh, uh, people who work in the IT or business uh, domain. So we have not just used uh, uh, local or uh, uh, internal modeling techniques, but by the use of Archimate, we have made it more, well, to use the word again, open to uh, to all the people who want to uh, use our architecture model. So I think in that, if you look from that perspective, we are we are not only doing a very critical work, but also we, we, you can consider us in taking a lead in this to, to model such a complex environment in a functional architecture and then also modeling it in, in Archimate. I think, and my colleagues will agree that this is 
this has been and will be a, a, a big challenge, which we are proud also to do, but which also has a broader impact. Once again, when we look at this community and when we talk about the community of LF Energy, of course, there are a lot of players who are involved, who are creating projects, but then there are a lot of folks who are leveraging or using them and not everybody can get involved. Everybody doesn't have resources to get. Uh, uh, uh. So when we look at the LF Energy community today, what would you call a community? Because community is not just the core members who are contributing the code. I look at the community as the ecosystem, the other players who are also leveraging the work you folks are doing. We should also not forget that we are into in a transition phase. So in in a generic sense, the energy sector is in a transition. So the boundaries per se, as you are well aware, the, for example, the boundary between who is a pr producer and who is a consumer is it's getting dimmer and din dimmer per day. So we are aware that we cater to a bigger ecosystem. Um, there are people who uh, use our uh, who could use our vision or our products or our uh, models to develop further and think about new business models. But uh, I think to I cannot enumerate per se every stakeholder. Maybe Benua can uh, give more uh, more specific answer to that. But a short answer would be that we are catering to all stakeholders who are in the transition. So uh, they could be producers, they could be consumers, they could be uh, people who are making standards or protocols for devices. We could, we are ca also catering to uh, industries which make uh, smart devices because at one moment they will also be a part uh, by one way or the other in the energy transition. So our spectrum is very broad. But I think the specific answer what uh, is probably uh, can be given by Benoit because uh, yeah, he is uh, more in touch with the technical side. What I think is that um, this work is mainly focusing once again on clarity and it's providing clarity. And that's for the benefits of the project themselves. So they will be better at communicating at, on what they are doing and what are exactly their identity, what they are aiming at doing within the functional architecture, how it interacts with other projects. So that's better for the project themselves. They will have a better audience that will have a better knowledge of what they are doing exactly. And for the people that are looking for a solution, they will have a better clarity on what is today available uh, in the Linux Foundation energy ecosystem. What is today available in a strong foundation uh, in, in terms of open source for energy? So I think that's that's deserve, that, that's for for everybody that is involved in this industry. Uh, this clarification is 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 very useful and is really required. Earlier, you were talking about some gaps. Uh, the the model is, you know, I look at it, you know, kind of work in progress. What are what are the things, you know, what are the gaps that you see out there? What are the things that are missing? Uh, that you know, you're like, hey, these are the things that are in the pipeline. One big area that is not that is not paved today by any project is is the what we identify as the asset management area. So. When you look at the initial uh, function architecture that was reused for that Archimate uh, modeling, we see that there is a huge area that needs to do that, that needs some code, needs some contribution, needs some open source initiative uh, on the asset management uh, side because that's really strategic for our, our industry today. Uh, our assets are aging, and, uh, and and we need to have projects to 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 come up. Uh, to cover that area, and uh, I'm sure that that there is business to be done on, on that area for anybody. Uh, so, and in terms of initiatives, uh, what I could say is that uh, since the beginning of the Linux Foundation Energy, we see that there is a real momentum. We are more, we have more and more projects, and the density of the functional of the pavement of the functional architecture with project is getting higher and higher so that we are really in, in, in the right path uh, to achieving what was uh, what, what was expected when we launched the Linux Foundation Energy. So we, as of today, we can already say that the Linux Foundation Energy Initiative is, is a success and we can see it uh, with this architecture group. What next step I also see is that uh, we are currently trying to link the functional architecture with the business functions of the projects which are in the ecosystem. That, that is not only logical, but also in terms of priority 
a high priority for uh, for for us that gives us more clarity also to the stakeholders and a, a clearer view of what the uh, of what the projects can accomplish uh, the links between the different projects that would also be clearer to understand discuss and build upon them in terms of potential i also see that as a huge potential uh, growth there uh, with my team, uh, with uh, my team in Aliander, we are busy to interact with the project teams and discuss the business aspect or the business values of their of their projects. Again, that will be mapped in the functional architecture. And by these concrete steps, we 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 make it clearer what values are being delivered by the by the projects in the LFE ecosystem. When you are talking about the business value, uh, how is that helping them to understand? Hey, uh, getting involved, contributing to LF Energy is also you know good for ROI for us as utility. Having the links foundation energy uh, that's a, a huge value, and so that for our business that's for sure a necessity because there is a wall of development that is to be climbed. It's just before us. And, and, and thanks to the Linux Foundation Energy, we are able to put our forces all together to, to, to build that, 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 all that mountain of code that is required for the energy transition. And, um, and yes, so that's where we are finding the, the value. We, we, there, there is competition also in open source, like in, with proprietary software. But that's in an open way we can work all together. And we are very happy also to pay and support the company that are involved in providing code for us. Uh, so that's not that we don't want to pay, uh, that we don't want to give money. We want to give money, but we want to do it in, in, in a shared fashion because we think that's the most efficient way to, to achieve the, 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 the <laughs> the huge amount of code that needs to be done for us. Of course, this is a growing community, but uh, talk a bit about what kind of folks you would like to get involved with this working group or with this project. In terms of contribution, the first people that we would like to be involved are uh, the people from the project themselves. So people that are designing code uh, and that are, and we want their support, that we want them to be part of our initiative because we, we want to serve them, but they are the best people to give us the clarity that is required for this initiative. So that's the first people that we would like to be helped by. That's a contribution. We want to support them, to help them in, have a better communication, better audience, but we need their input to do that job. We need their contribution to that. So I, probably that's the, where the, the first contribution is expected. And then if we can have also other people that are experts in architecture and especially in Archimate modeling, we would be very happy to, to have them on board and they can contribute, help the projects to clarify their, their architecture. And, and so th that's where we were expecting the, the most uh, contribution. And I'm very happy to have this video too because I want people to know that this project, uh, this group is existing and that we are publishing uh, in, in, real, in live uh, this, archite this architecture. So if it's possible to, to see this growing, so please come and visit. And if you're interested in contributing, of course, you're very welcome. This whole chain, or, or we say in Dutch Kate, and this whole chain from uh, uh, the, in the energy sector where energy is at one place developed and the other place consumed. This is a complex and long chain. And there are many actors, many industries, many companies involved. Now, if the digital transition is there, of course, uh, every uh, every stakeholder, every com com company will be affected in one way or the other. So to answer the question and look very far ahead, who do we want to get involved? We want everybody to get involved who is in the chain. That's a very simple answer because by being involved in the in our community, in our uh, Archimate group or in the Fun Linux Energy Foundation, either they will learn something or we will learn from them because the chain affects us all. So the, the scope is very broad. Again, I will reiterate what Benoit was said that we want people to get involved. And if you are in the sector, uh, there is win-win situation. And we are here doing a lot of effort, taking the lead to model uh, critical aspects uh, and we can also learn from other projects which uh, which join us
how mature is the project? What are the major challenges that you have already tackled or you are there to still to tackle there? So when they look at this, you know, this, this, you know, group, they're like, hey, you know what? A lot of heavy lifting is already done or this is my skill set I can bring in and help the project. One thing which I'm really proud about in the group and which is also evident, uh, no explanation is needed, is that we have a lot of domain knowledge uh, from RTE side and Aliander side. And the others, uh, we have also also uh, arch architecture, archimate modeling experience. So that thing is already there. Uh, so there is, of course, more domain knowledge or domain specific knowledge. For example, when I was talking about asset, asset management, partners, individuals, practitioners, experts, for example, who are specifically really experienced in asset management can join our group and make progress in specific that domain. And that is valid for every domain which has uh, been in the, uh, inside the LFE foundation. But in terms of generic uh, domain knowledge, the clients which we have, the scope which we have, the geographical area which RTE and Aliander cover in Europe is, is gigantic. So there's a lot of experience also. In, uh, so people can make use of this uh, expertise which is already there. As you were uh, talking, Prince, that people can come and join this. Uh, what are the processes in place so that you know how they can join so there is a, a, an email for for the list that you can subscribe to i don't know it by heart but i think that we can put that here as a link so there is a, a, an, an email to the group uh, we have also a channel in the slack of the linux foundation energy uh, and there is um, and we have a github repo in which you can uh, put uh, issues and yeah, take contact with us. So uh, there is a lot of ways to, to, to get in touch to us and, uh, and, and we're very, very reactive. So please don't hesitate to come and, and, and contribute. Uh, one last question before we wrap this up is first of all, the, the summit in Paris is coming up. Uh, what are your plans for the next either few months or any announcement that you're planning? Of course, you cannot share a lot of details there, but just to get a glimpse of what are the things that are, you know, you're you know, working on. Yeah, that's a very cool question, and that's something that's that's of high priority for us. Uh, actually, we have a, we will have a presentation of what we are doing at the at the Links Foundation Energy Summit so in Paris, and uh, the goal is to to have an archimate view that is up to date with the actual project that we have at the in the in the ecosystem. So the real project that are at least at the incubation stage should at least be have a, a summarized model uh, that we can show during the, the Linux Foundation Energy Summit. I think that would be really great uh, for the project themselves and for us too, to show that we have this uh, ability to, um, to come up with, uh, with a um, uh, consolidated view of the Linux Foundation Energy um, ecosystem. A lot of efforts we are doing inside Aliander to uh, in this perspective in this stream. Uh, ben already mentioned that we have a presentation coming up in uh, Paris. A couple of our projects from Aliander will be doing a, a presentation. The if we only have over the functional architecture and Archimate, I think more and more projects uh, now see the use of it, and they 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 use it as a tool to show what they are actually doing and to reach stakeholders. So I think this is a mind shift which is happening and this will also keep on happening. Uh, another thing which was also discussed before is that now we have made a big step and said that the projects which are in the LFA or they want to join or want to change state, they should have a, a sort of a mature project architecture. architecture. That is also something for the future. And uh, we will use the functional architecture which we have right now in Archimate to answer generic questions which stakeholders ask. For example, how can I uh, do a smart device control? How can I do monitoring of the devices? Now we want to use the model to answer generic basic fun business level questions based on the architecture which we already have. So that is something which we uh, which will which we'll be working on. Prince Benoit, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this initiative, this group, this working group, this project. And I look forward to meeting you folks at the upcoming summit. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you.